Chess Killer Alexander Pakushkin is also known as the chessboard killer. He was busted back in 2007 and charged with killing an astonishing number of people, 48 to be exact. He got his nickname after the police found a chessboard covered in dates, with each date indicating a killing. This guy was marking down his foul deeds on a chessboard and had all except for two squares filled. Alexander was such a frightening villain to the Russian public when he was caught that they actually thought about bringing back the death penalty. Here's where things get even sicker. Alexander was having a personal competition with another serial killer from Russia named Andrei Sakatilo, who was convicted in 1992 of 52 murders. It was around the time of Andre's trial that Alexander started killing. Who did Alexander kill? He mostly targeted old people by luring them into the park to have a drink at his deceased dog's grave. But there was no grave, only death for the victim. Alexander would typically beat them to death with a blunt instrument, something like a hammer or a rusty pipe, and then he threw their bodies into the sewer. The police reported that some of them were even still alive as they drowned in the disgusting sewage. As time went on, Alexander got sloppy. He stopped disposing of the bodies, leaving them to be discovered by the public. It wasn't until 2003 that residents of Moscow realized there was a serial killer on the loose. It took another three years for the authorities to capture Alexander. They only got him because he got careless and became so blindly murderous that he killed one of his co-workers at the supermarket where he worked. 9. Moonlight Murders The Texarkana Moonlight Murders were the inspiration behind the horror classic The Town That Dreaded Sundown. The murders were committed in Texarkana during the spring of 1946 by an unidentified lunatic who is still unknown to this day. The media calls him the Phantom Slayer, and he's credited with 10 weeks of brutal mayhem, attacking 8 people and killing 5. This was between February 22nd and May 3rd of 1946. His first two victims survived the attack, but from then on, the killer went on slaying a victim every three weeks. The Texas Rangers investigated the case but made no headway. Texarkana went into a state of panic. Businesses closed up. There were police patrolling the streets and neighborhoods, but the killer vanished into the dark. After three months without a murder, the Texas Rangers left town. The only potential suspect was a guy named Yoel Sweeney, a petty criminal who may have been suddenly consumed by murderous rage. However, there was never enough evidence to indict the man, and if it was him, he never killed again. 8. Casey Anthony Cindy Anthony called the police in Orlando, Florida on July 15, 2008. She reported that her granddaughter Kaylee had been missing for 31 days. She was alarmed because her daughter Casey, Kaylee's mom, told the authorities that Kaylee was with a babysitter named Zaneda Gonzalez, a story that turned out not to be true. When the police got suspicious and took Casey to Universal Studios where she said she worked, it turned out that that was a lie too. She didn't have a job at Universal Studios. Over the following months, the country was gripped by fear of what happened to young Kaylee Anthony. Meanwhile, the police were searching for clues. They couldn't seem to find the little girl, but they did put together heaps of evidence against her mother. Finally, in October, they indicted Casey Anthony on seven criminal counts, one of them being first-degree murder. The young girl was reported missing in July, and her decomposed remains were discovered in December. They were found in a secluded forest near the Anthony home. Two years after that, the trial was held for Casey. The prosecution put forward that Casey had chloroformed her daughter and then suffocated her to death by wrapping duct tape around her mouth and nose. Casey claims the kid drowned by accident in the family pool. She said that she was distraught about what happened, feared getting into trouble, and so she covered it up. But the whole thing, according to Casey, had just been an accident. To this day, nobody except Casey knows what really happened. According to CNN, she ended up being acquitted of the serious charges and is now living a quiet life in Florida. Do you believe her story? What do you think really happened? And what do you think the consequences should be? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. 7. The Zodiac Killer 
The most important thing you need to know about the Zodiac Killer is that he was never caught. He did, however, take credit for a string of murders that went down in the San Francisco Bay Area in the 1960s. It was the killer who gave himself the nickname we all know him by today. He has been directly linked to no less than five murders that took place between 1968 and 1969. According to his official biography, he may have killed even more. He was one of the most brazen criminals in history for taunting the police and sending threatening letters to the local newspapers all the way up until 1974. After that, he vanished completely, never committed any more public crimes, and seemed retired from the spotlight. His bizarre correspondence with the media started on August 1, 1969. He sent handwritten letters to the San Francisco Examiner, the San Francisco Chronicle, and other newspapers. In the letters, he stated that he killed two teenagers the previous Christmas at Lake Herman. The letters contained details of the murders that only the killer could have possibly known. In a bizarre move, he promised to kill more people if the letters weren't printed on the front page of each newspaper. To make matters even more mysterious, the letters contained ciphers that, if solved, were promised to allow the FBI to track this guy down and catch him. A local high school teacher named Donald Harden cracked the code, but the Zodiac Killer had lied. The letters contained nothing that could help police catch him. He went on taunting San Francisco until he, presumably, got bored and just stopped. 6. The West Memphis Murders Damien Eccles, Jason Baldwin, and Jesse Miscali Jr. are known as the West Memphis Three. They were just teenagers in 1994 when they were convicted of a triple murder in West Memphis. They were caught killing three other teenagers, Michael Moore, Chris Byers, and Stevie Branch. This wouldn't have been such national news if not for what came out at their trial, when the three teens admitted to killing the other three teens as part of a cult ritual. When the three bodies were discovered in 1993 in a ditch deep in the woods, about 24 hours after being reported missing, they were found beaten, naked, and tied up like hogs. One of them had even been castrated. There wasn't much evidence for police to go on, other than the immediate assumption that it had something to do with a satanic ritual. It caused an outbreak of fear, with the locals worried that a group of Satanists had moved into the area. The big break in the case came because of Jerry Driver, Damien Eccles' probation officer. He had dealt with a teenager enough to believe he was involved with an evil sect. After Jerry shared his suspicions with the police working on the case, they were quick to track down Eccles and his two accomplices. Miss Kelly quickly broke under interrogation and confessed. It turned out there was no cult, just three seriously misguided youths. 5. The Boston Strangler It took 49 years for police to solve the case of the Boston Strangler. It all started in the 1960s when women across the Massachusetts area became the target of a brutal serial killer. By the time the reign of terror had come to a close, the Boston Strangler had murdered 11 women. Five different district's attorney's offices were baffled by the string of murders and came up empty when it came to solving them. In fact, the police would never have even solved this crime if it hadn't been for the murderer, a convicted felon named Albert DeSalvo, admitting while in jail that it was he who killed the 11 women. But despite getting a confession from the killer, the case really didn't come to a close. Albert was found dead in his cell a short time later under dubious circumstances. This was in 1973. Forty years later, in July of 2013, the Boston Police Department finally got DNA evidence that directly links Albert to the crimes, specifically to the murder of Mary Sullivan. DNA found on the scene was an almost perfect match to the DNA taken from Albert's nephew. The acquiring of the DNA proved to be a clever trick on behalf of the police. Someone followed the nephew to his place of work and then took a water bottle with DeSalvo's DNA on it. This gave them cause to dig up Albert's body after 30 years underground and confirm the DNA sample beyond a doubt. 4. Joshua Ward it doesn't get any more true crime than the recent case of Joshua Ward. The Ohio man has been charged in two counts of capital murder. Joshua had been dating Kelly Kramer, a woman 17 years younger than himself. According to the official statements, Joshua only dated Kelly for six months in 2016 and 2017. When the relationship came to an abrupt end, Joshua believed Kelly had destroyed him. 
so he wanted a way to get back at her. The best way to do this seemed to be by going after her young son, who was only in fourth grade at the time. According to the boy's grandfather, he was a straight-A student before Joshua got involved. In the court proceedings, it came to light that Joshua had likely acted out of jealousy, but it also came to light that Kelly Kramer had a long history of drugs and prostitution. She was also a member of an underground BDSM network, which is how she met Joshua in the first place. Joshua Ward told the police that after he broke up with Kelly, she went back to prostituting, which upset him a great deal. But no matter which way you slice it, and no matter how messed up both of them were, Joshua walked into a house in Kentucky where Kelly was living with her son and shot them both in the face. We're still waiting for the conviction in this case, but it looks like Joshua will be getting at least 20 years behind bars. 3. The Boy in the Box The dead boy that was found in a box 61 years ago is popularly known as America's Unknown Child. The boy was found in the Fox Chase neighborhood of Philadelphia in 1957. His remains were uncovered in a box stashed on the side of the road. Police said he was between four and six at the time of death and discovered badly beaten and fully naked. It was obviously a murder and police suspected a psychopath because it looked as though the child's hair had been cut after he was killed. There were also signs of malnourishment, suggesting he had been kept captive. To this day, The Boy in the Box is the longest-lasting cold case file in Philadelphia. The strangest part of it all is that nobody has ever identified the kid. Over 400,000 flyers were put out showing the child's face. Over 270 police academy recruits have looked at the crime scene, and there was even a white handkerchief discovered with the letter G on it. Still, there has never been any breaks in the case, and his identity is still unknown. 2. Icebox Murders the Icebox murders are a series of killings that happened in Houston and are still unsolved. The case started on June 23, 1965, when police were requested to do a welfare check on Fred and Edwina Rogers. Police knocked on the door. Nobody answered, so they kicked it in. Inside the trailer, they found the refrigerator filled with stacks of meat, but this wasn't any ordinary meat. It was human meat, taken from dismembered bodies, then wrapped in plastic for safekeeping. There are also a pair of human heads in the crisper. But Fred and Edwina had nothing to do with the murders. They were the ones who had gotten murdered. Edwina had a bullet wound to her head, and Frank had been bludgeoned to death with a hammer. They had both been drained of their blood and cut up into slices of meat. The medical examiner investigating the crime told the Globe's Time that whoever did this had known what they were doing and had taken their sweet time. The police first thought the killer was their son, a man named Charles Rogers. He was known as a recluse who lived in his bedroom with his parents and only ever spoke to them by slipping notes underneath his door. It very well could have been Charles, but the police never managed to find him even after conducting a nationwide manhunt. He vanished without a trace and was declared legally dead a decade later in 1975. 1. The Werewolf Killer The werewolf killer slaughtered women indiscriminately for 20 years. His real name is Mikhail Popkov. He's a Siberian ex-police officer who murdered right under the noses of fellow police officials. For two long decades, he targeted women and then stabbed them to death. This is despite being both a husband and father. You see, the werewolf killer was a complete psycho, living a double life without his family knowing. His co-workers and the people he was close to described him as the model husband and the perfect father. He was also described as charming, funny, and always the life of the party. But in 1992, he started killing. The werewolf only killed women. He would roam around to different bars and ask drunk women if they needed a ride home. Once he got them in the car, it was game over. He took them out to the woods, did really horrible things to them, butchered them like animals, and then went back to his family as if nothing happened. His victims were between the ages of 16 and 40, and he almost always stabbed them to the point where they looked like they had been torn open by a werewolf. This is where he got the name from. 
Mikhail was finally captured when one of his victims escaped. Well, she didn't escape so much as he forgot to murder her. He beat her head against a tree and left her for dead, but she was still alive. She quickly identified Mikhail as the murderer, and his DNA directly connected him to the crime scene. He was arrested just a few years ago in 2012 and found guilty of 22 murders. Since his conviction, he's admitted to killing 60 more. Which of these insane murder cases is the most terrifying? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back for more awesome videos. See you next time. Bye.